Gentlemen, <laughs> a treat a special. Just get this out of the way. All right, uh, we're gonna have a look at uh, some flashing today. <laughs> I'm not talking about uh, going to the park <laughs> with a long raincoat. I <laughs> know, uh, uh, talking about firmware. <laughs> All right, so unless you've been living under a rock for the past few days, you'll know that I released some firmware for the Ultimate One Megabyte Incognito 1088XL, 1088XLD, side to side. And, uh, if you haven't already updated your firmware, head on over to atari.co.uk today and uh, download the, uh, the good stuff and get it on the Atari. So uh, what do I want to talk about today? Well get a lot of um, questions about how do I go about updating these ROMs. Some people are a little bit intimidated about uh, how to go about it. So what I thought I would do today is run through all the different methods you can use. Uh, I generally use uh, SIO to PC there. It's, uh, it's homemade. It's, it's crookeder than, a, crookeder than a, a pancake one megabyte, but uh, it works. It works at Devisor Zero and uh, I'm very happy with it, but there's, there's a number of different ways you go about it, especially if you don't have one of these uh, serial I.O. Uh, peripherals. So, uh, yeah, I thought we could dive in and uh, look at the different methods you can use, how you have to set things up. Well, let's get into it. Now, the page you want uh, is the firmware page here. So, in our case here, we're going to download the Ultimate One Megabyte firmware. Uh, which you can see it's got a nice little new sticker there <laughs> another button next to it <laughs> yeah anyway so uh, you can unroll these little um, collapsible uh, folding sections read about what's new uh, and here we get the firmware download which is a bit we're interested in of course so if we just uh, click here all right so once we've got the file downloaded here uh, you can have a look at the contents. We've got three folders. We've got the ATR folder, we've got the plugins folder, and we've got the ROM folder. Now, the ATR folder, uh, that is your disk image, which basically contains everything uh, that is in the other folders. But if you prefer to use the disk image, which probably a lot of people do, uh, you can mount this disk image using uh, Respect. Um, SIO to SD, SIO to PC, SIO to USB, anything that will allow you, or S Drive Max, anything that will allow you to uh, mount it uh, using the SIO connector on the back of the machine, mount that uh, disk image, and then when you go onto the Atari, where you should boot uh, with Sparta Does X enabled, by the way, uh, because this disk image is formatted uh, using the Sparta DOS. Uh, disk format and um, Sparta DOS X is required in order to perform the flashing process. So you can mount that uh, disk image and we'll have a look at the contents later on. Uh, so if we back out of that, if you want to use one of the other methods, um, say of uh, using the compact flash card itself uh, to perform the update, we've got the files here. Uh, the ROM files and UFlash all in the ROM folder there. So the we've got three different Sparta DOS X ROMs. The 192K ROM uh, coexists alongside the uh, graphical operating system demo. Uh, if you want to have that on the ROM, uh, the 256K ROM, which I had a hell of a lot of trouble with over the weekend, doesn't really much particular use if you unless you find some you know, a special purpose or you want to use leave 64k of ROM space free. Uh, the 320k Sparta DOS X ROM is the one you want to use if you don't want to have the, the uh, GOS demo on the Ultimate One Megabyte and you want the biggest possible uh, car uh, volume ROM drive cartridge on the machine. Uh, and these two at the bottom, now these are complete ROMs, 512k, so you've got all your operating systems, all your basics, Sparta DOS X, all the firmware, all pre-installed. Now, if you're coming from the uh, the original firmware, the Candle firmware, which had the high-speed OS and various other things that aren't really needed anymore, I would recommend that you go for these, uh, either of these two, no GOS being hopefully self-explanatory. That's got the 320k Sparta DOS X. 
because that's going to replace everything all in one fell swoop get rid of any redundant operating system ROMs that kind of thing then you can start with a completely fresh slate so either of those if you're moving from the old firmware and the old ROMs uh, are the one to go for so if we come out of here we've also got the plug-in folder which we won't really go into in this video uh, these are ultimate one megabyte plugins that one in the middle side p is the default plugin which for most people is going to be absolutely fine and we've got various text documents that you can look through here read me i've been struggling to try and find a more descriptive naming strategy for this file than read me um, i don't really quite know what else i could use but the idea of that is that you read it um, sometimes they put read me first so the extension would be first uh, that's a possibility maybe that would make it a bit less ambiguous but anyway in any case this text file tells you all about what I've just been telling you here what the files are if we wanted to go ahead and use respect uh, the way I do things uh, we'll open up respect drag it from the primary monitor and the scaling is a complete and utter nightmare it doesn't scale too well I'm running 150 percent scaling here and it is not going particularly well let's try that again uh, no that's not good um, so yeah some scaling problems in in respect here with uh, different DPI settings unfortunately uh, but never mind we'll uh, I want you to be able to read what's on the screen primarily so if we uh, if we go into the uh, slot number one and uh, we go over to uh, the desktop and we go here and we go here so this is the disk image that I've just been showing you we'll mount that on drive one <coughs> on uh, the SI with a PC with uh, respect which you can download I'll, I'll put a link in the description to wait and download this and now we can go back over to the Atari and perform the firmware update all right so for the purposes of this uh, demonstration let's assume that we're upgrading from the original um, firmware and bios a couple of things i've switched on here which one of which you need to switch on is the sparta dos x uh, rom has to be enabled for this to work most of the other options are optional the side hardware um, if when we get into some of the other upgrade methods that will become uh, relevant um, at the moment it's not really um, I've got the high speed operating system enabled because I'm having, I want to get through this fairly quickly and I want to run Divisor 0 with my uh, SIO to PC here. So with this generation of firmware I need uh, that patched operating system. I won't need it later on because it's built into my uh, firmware. So with, everything looks fine. So we'll save that and we'll press C. Remembering that we've got the uh, disk image mounted on drive one so if we do a dir we should see all the stuff there which we do uh, we see the firmware rom and the different sdx roms and the one we want is uh ultimate rom as i say if you don't want the uh, graphical os uh, pick that one okay and that's one new flash okay, it's going to be a little bit slower than i'm used to but uh it'll do for the purposes of the video all right, so we're going to flash the entire ROM here. So we've already got the highlight bar in the correct entry, which is the chip. Uh, these are all subcategories of the chips. So we just press enter on there. Flash all ROM. Yes, we're okay with that. We are going to select ultimate. Press enter. Press enter again. And wait for it to read in. And then you, as it finishes reading in, you'll get another confirmation. Uh, just that you're absolutely sure you want to flash the whole thing. Okay, so the file is now fully read into memory and we just have to press return again to OK. We want to flash. And just touch nothing until it's done. Completed successfully, that's what you want to see. So press enter there, you get this little designated to show you that uh, everything on the system has been updated um, after such a dramatic um, update you really need to uh, 
power cycle the machine ideally just to clear everything out so when we power cycle the machine we should uh, go direct to the uh, firmware menu automatically with a profile reset message uh, if that didn't happen if the checksum didn't catch the uh, change to the uh, configuration just boot with the help key uh, held down and to ensure that we start with a clean slate as it were uh, if the profile hasn't already been reset uh, we can go here to default settings you can also just press D uh, accept default settings there and OK and uh, then we can go ahead and configure things the way we want them we can uh, most of the settings are sensible defaults but we might want to turn on the uh, SIO uh, accelerated SIO on the PBI things like that if you've got a side cartridge you might want to enable hard disk that's all covered in the manual kind of outside the scope the uh, firmware is updated now so if we just press B to um, save and boot uh, restart the system again and boot Sparta DOS X which it does we can see that we've got the new uh, firmware number at the top and we'll see that we've got Sparta DOS 4.49 which is the latest build and everything is absolutely as it should be all right so let's imagine that you're already running the uh, newer generation of firmware I bring an update out uh, you want to apply it you've, you're already happy with the rest of the contents of the ROM you've got the maybe you've already updated Sparta DOS X separately and you're happy with the basic ROMs and the operating system ROMs all you want to update is the firmware that's or some other component or maybe Sparta DOS X or whatever so what we can do and you notice here that I've got the side 2 cartridge plugged into the machine while well, I'm going to do this update that's no problem at all as long as uh, you've got the hard disk enabled here and you've got the ATR swap button enabled and it's a side 2 cartridge I do not recommend leaving a side 1 cartridge in here because there's a register clash with ultimate 1 megabyte so if there's anything but a side 2 take it out but if you leave the side 2 cartridge in uh, the machine day -to -day, on a day to day basis and run the hard disk uh, from the compact flash card no problem at all performing the firmware update or a complete ROM flash with the cartridge in because when the uh, swap button's turned on the, the ROM on this cartridge is completely masked it's not going to get in the way uh, we've also got the high speed SIO driver because we should now be able to successfully run divisor 0 126 kilobits per second so uh, everything looks to be in order so we will restart the machine I have to imagine this is an older firmware version of course uh, let's log drive A there we go and once again let's type U flash okay so maybe if we wanted to update Sparta DOS X we could go in here and we could pick one of the Sparta DOS X ROMs that uh, corresponds to the size of uh, ROM we've got in the options set SDX size here so this is configured for 192 kilobyte uh, Sparta DOS X you can change that if you wish but that's not what we want to do here that's what we want to update the firmware so we're going to cursor down to firmware press enter cursor down to firmware.rom press enter press enter again and here we go the process has begun already and you can see how quickly it uh, reads in here at 126 kilobits per second it's erasing the chip it is performing the flash relatively quickly so this is the critical section um, I never ever had any problems here but uh, if, it, if it's going to go wrong this is the worst time for it to go wrong uh, verified okay all done now just in case going from one firmware to another some of the equates in the uh, uh, say the PBI BIOS have changed we don't want to be running the system with uh, all sorts of mismatched stuff going on uh, contents of RAM not initialized properly so let's power off the machine again and let's turn it back on hold down the help key and there we are nice new flashed firmware and you can go in and configure things uh, as you wish Now for those of us who don't have um, an SIO to PC or S drive or SIO to SD, that kind of thing, I highly recommend getting one, um, by the way, one of those uh, devices, absolutely invaluable. Uh, but, but for anyone who doesn't have it or wants to try a, a quicker method of updating the firmware, what we're going to do next is we're going to try and use the compact flash card. Now, 
using the combat flashcard, there's even two methods of going about this. Uh, the first one, to use the disk image uh, from the update package, uh, should work with any generation of firmware. So if you're updating from the original Ultimate 1 megabyte firmware, that should work fine. You should be able to mount uh, the disk image and perform the upgrade. The other method, which involves putting the raw files onto the fat partition, uh, and then launching uFlash from the loader, so from the prior generation or the prior version of the loader in the firmware that you want to update. I can only guarantee that's going to work if you already have a version of my firmware installed. Um, Candles loader did uh, have a built-in file system handler, but I'm not, I can't be absolutely sure whether that version found its way onto all the cartridges. It's been a little bit hit and miss. Uh, in my experience, I can't remember whether it's always the incognitos that have that version on or or what. So to be safe or to avoid disappointment to finding that what I'm going to describe doesn't work, uh, I would say I guarantee it's going to work if you already have my firmware installed. Uh, although the disk image method is going to work. So let's do the disk image method first because we know that's going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a fat partition on this card, which you pr presumably know how to do <laughs> could be a topic for another video and we're just going to drop the ATR the uh, firmware ATR image into the fat and then we're going to put it back in the machine I'll show you what to do all right so I've simply copied from the zip file that we downloaded I've simply copied the ROM and the ATR folders straight onto a fat partition on this card so let's put the card in and we'll go into the loader. So we'll first go into the bar. So we're going to press L. All right. And of course, this, me being me, I've got umpteen different fat partitions on this card. So I think it's in test two. And there we go. There's a firmware folder that I made. And there's the two folders that I copied across. So we want the ETR folder. So we're going to press uh, the tab key. And it comes up automatically with drive one. Press enter. That now is mounted on drive one. As we can see, if we go across to the drive table here. Now we want to have um, SpartaDOS X active uh, while we're working with this image so we can just press Control X. Uh, if the older version of the firmware doesn't have this facility here which I'll show you um, to boot SpartaDOS X here um, you need to go back into the BIOS with help and reset and then reboot into SpartaDOS X and that disk image will still be there and you should be able to get at it with the um, from the command prompt but in here we can uh, relatively recent version we can press Control and X to boot SpartaDOS X and you will see that if I go to drive A and press DIR there is our firmware uh, disk image and it's running from the Combat flashcard. Okay, so we're going to do the usual. I'm going to press U flash XEX. And as before, we could do any of the operations that we've already described. We could flash the entire ROM if we wanted to with uh, one of the images here. No problem at all. Uh, or we could just update the firmware. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see how quickly uh, this one loads in. So if we press enter and enter again. So it does load rather quickly. Flashing speed is just the same. So this is all accomplished with no uh, SIO peripherals whatsoever. This is all done uh, using the compact flash card. Okay, now again, if you've uh, updated the firmware or if you've updated the Sparta.dos X ROM, which has the file system in it, uh, the file system driver, best to do a power cycle, a reboot, uh, just to make sure that everything uh, is nicely aligned in memory. So if you don't have uh, an SI or the PC device uh, or you prefer copying stuff to the compact flash card like this and doing everything with a cartridge, absolutely no problem at all to do that uh, since the mounted ATRs behave much as they do uh, using SIO to XXX devices but at a much higher speed. So the next thing we'll try if we go back into the setup menu and we'll go into the loader and come back out of that folder and we'll go down to ROM here. Now, 
the loader only shows uh, files that it can recognize so although I've got ROM uh, files in this folder as well you're not seeing them here but trust me they are there so if we actually run um, uflash directly from the loader you will find that because the loader has a little uh, mini DOS uh, so we're not in Sparta DOS X anymore we're completely outside of there now but the loader has a little mini resident file system handler and if we press enter you can see that it lists the contents of the folder so this is the raw fat partition no disk image involved this is direct from the fat partition on the card doesn't matter if it's fat 32 or fat 16 in this case um, and we can once again do our firmware update and it's even faster this time if uh, IO speed is of absolute utmost importance to you when you're doing these things. There's no real quicker way than to do it directly from uh, the FAT by copying the raw files uh, to the card and doing things this way. So you can see it's already done. There we go and everything's still working absolutely fine. So let's try that again. Let's imagine we're going to do the whole uh, ROM. I was just curious to see how quickly it'll read uh, the entire thing. So let's do the whole chip. Let's use Ultimate ROM and we'll see how quickly it reads uh, directly from the FAT. Okay, yes, okay, there we go. There you go. I won't flash it this time, I just wanted to see uh, how quickly it read in. Um, so there you go, that's the other way of uh, going about it. Okay, so the next thing we'll talk about, and I had to talk someone through this last night on Discord and uh, absolutely understand uh, why, because uh, they wanted to do things right. And uh, there's so many files that it can be a little bit confusing. I've tried to write uh, guides uh, to talk people through this, but of course trying to cover every possible eventuality or ways that you can misunderstand things is very difficult to do. So we'll step through it now. The general um, methods employed will be applicable to side one cartridges as well. So what we want to do here is disable Sparta DOS X in the ultimate one megabyte. We want to turn off the hard disk in the PBI BIOS if you've already got it enabled. Leave the high speed SIO driver enabled by all means because we want to do things, uh, we don't want to do things at a snail's pace when it comes to IO. Uh, so that's fine, so we'll save that. Now, the next thing we want to do is put this switch uh, down in the Sparta DOS X position and then we'll do a power cycle just to reset the cartridge registers to the default values. We'll turn on again and we should boot Sparta DOS X from the side two cartridge. And this is very important because we need this banking register to be uh, exposed and we don't want any ROMs on the ultimate one megabyte to be in the way. That will stop uh, Uflash from detecting the cartridge. And that seems to be a common problem. People get mixed up with uh, which ROM they should have enabled. Uh, you need to boot Sparta DOS X from the cartridge. You'll see that happen because you'll see the side driver come up here. You won't see this uh, when Sparta DOS X boots from the ultimate one megabyte. So the next thing we need to do is download the update and to begin with we'll mount it in respect using the SIO to PC as we did before. In this one, I'm going to use the file called side 2 full OSS carts.atr. Now, this one does a full flash of the device, so we're going to flash it to the chip, not to the Sparta DOS X slot or the external cart slot. The whole chip's going to get done because we need to uh, enable the one megabyte of RAM. That's something I should have mentioned before because uFlash reads the whole ROM image into memory. So let's have a look at drive one, see what's on the update disk. So we've got uh, Side2.com. Now Side2.com is the DLT flasher uh, which does not require any external memory and I'll show you how to use that one. Uh, we'll try, uh, we'll do the uFlash method first because we've got the memory. So anyway, let's run uFlash. Uh, 
and we are going to pick the top entry here which is the chip because we're going to flash all 512k of the contents and we go down to side 2 OSS ROM press enter and press OK and we get the confirmation message and we press OK and now begins the uh, fairly lengthy process of updating all 512 kilobytes And there we are, successfully completed. And if we can, uh, well, we don't need to uh, power cycle, we'll just go back in here and reboot, make sure everything worked. So as we can see, the uh, machine boots up. It already uh, had been upgraded previously, but of course uh, it boots direct to the loader. We can check the version number is 3.1, 2020. So that's all good. Now to simulate the situation where we've got a machine uh, that doesn't have ultimate one megabyte or doesn't have enough RAM to use UFlash, we're going to change the uh, memory configuration to stock here. Everything else is still turned off. So this is essentially a stock 64K machine. And let's try and update the same update using the DLT flasher, side2.com. So let's have a look at our, we've still got the same uh, disk image mounted on drive one and there is side2.com. Now this flasher will update the cartridge without any additional memory. Now there is one caveat, if we have a look at the uh, Memlo uh, level here, it's a little high because of the fact that all of the uh, DOS drivers are in conventional memory instead of bank memory because we don't have any. Uh, so if you try and run a program in this uh, configuration and you get a memory conflict error, there is a handy hint that you can do if we type cold here and hold down the shift key and press enter. If you hold down the shift key, it'll actually suppress installation of the side driver. So as you see, it hasn't come up there. Now if we type mem, uh, it's gone down a bit. It's still high. I did hear uh, people having problems running these DLT flashes. Um, where Memlo was too high. Uh, it's still above uh, acceptable levels here. So anyway, that's one workaround when you're trying to save memory, lower Memlo, uh, that's one thing you can do. Anyway, let's run the flasher. You can just type side two if you want. Okay, do you want to proceed? Yes, I do. Erasing. And there we go, it's underway. It's going to do 64 banks in total, 0 through 63. So just leave it alone until it's finished. Uh, but this is in fact working uh, without any extra memory at all. So that is another option that you can use if you prefer. Uh, you don't have to use UFlash for this one at all. Okay, we're finished. No to restart program. I'm not quite sure where it's going to go after this. Oh, it's rebooted, and here we are. It's updated, and everything is working just fine. That's uh, two methods of updating the side two cartridge. Uh, I'm going to show you a third one, which doesn't require any SIO to PC or SIO to SD devices whatsoever. And it's much like the method that I showed you before with the ultimate one megabyte. So let's get into that. Okay, so I've got the, the machine has one megabyte of RAM again, remembering that we need that for UFlash to run, so providing that we can satisfy that condition. So I've copied all the raw files, the ROMs and the programs into a folder on the compact flash card here. Uh, we need to start the loader. We need to boot into Sparta DOS X, by the way. Don't put the switch in the up position and boot direct to the loader when you're trying to update the thing using this method, because we need the, the Sparta DOS X banking register to be enabled. So boot to Sparta DOS X, type car, That'll take us to the loader here, and there's all the folders from the uh, side update there. Several fat partitions here, more than likely if you've only got one, you'll be taken straight to the browser menu. So there's the side folder, and there's all the folders there. Now if we go into the ROM um, folder here, you won't see the ROM files, because of course the, the loader only lists, uh, only loads in what it can actually deal with. But if we run UFlash here... And once again, we're using the built-in file management system driver that is in the loader. Uh, make sure the FMS is enabled in the loader options, by the way, if you're using my an older version of my firmware and you want to do things this way. So let's press enter. We're going to flash the whole thing again. 
You don't have to if you wanted to just flash Sparta DOS X. Uh, you can go in and pick one of the SDX ROMs there, SDX side 2. That one will flash Sparta DOS. If you just wanted to update the loader, side load. It's the same loader for both side 1 and side 2. There's only one there that says side load, so that's the one to pick. So let's do the whole cartridge again. Let's pick side 2 OSS because I want the OSS ROMs uh, on the cartridge. Let's press enter. There we go. And let's go. So it's going to read them in at tremendous speed as it did before when we did this with the ultimate 1 megabyte. And then it'll ask if you want to flash the whole ROM. Hit OK. I won't do that because we've seen it before. That will flash the whole cartridge and achieve exactly the same result as what we did before. And when all this is finished, if you're using Ultimate 1 Megabyte to drive the side cartridge, go into the BIOS, change things back to the way they were before. So that's a, a way to get around it. If you don't have a, a serial I.O. device, you can do the update like this. So unfortunately, you can't use the DLT flasher using this method because that communicates directly with the SIO bus. Programs that uh, can work from the loader in this fashion and access the FAT file system have to go through the CIO. Now, a lot of the procedures I've described here are almost exactly the same when it comes to 1088 XELs, XLDs and Incognito. Incognito is different in the sense uh, that we don't have the uh, IDE um, host adapter uh, in the cartridge slot. The, uh, the device is integral to the board. And of course, we have the individual BIOS components that I ask you to flash in a specific order there, but it is much the same. Now over the weekend there were a couple of uh, little issues that I had to address where there was a typo in the loader and things like that. So if you hadn't, if you've downloaded uh, the latest update on uh, Friday, just gone or Saturday, uh, do go ahead and get the release dated for Ultimate One Megabyte at least 26th of April 2020. Um, now you can, although I didn't bump the version numbers because it would have been an absolute catastrophic nightmare if I had to do that for such minor problems. To verify the uh, build dates of the individual components here, this doesn't work for Incognito yet in the, in the version of UFlash that I've got released. I have fixed a local copy uh, which I will put out uh, which will give you this information on the Incognito firmware but as with this being such a critical piece of software, all the anytime I change something I want to test the hell out of it. I really do because I don't want to uh, end up with people uh, bricking their stuff, of course, that would cause me uh, a lot of distress. Anyway, so if we press P, we can go, you can get this through the menus, of course, to the slot properties. There's the shortcut P. If you press P here, uh, on the ultimate one megabyte, at least at the moment, uh, we can see all the firmware components have the version number and the revision date together with geometry information. So the PBI BIOS I released on Sunday has a revision date of the 26th of April because I had to fix a bug concerning side one. So we want to double check that. If you're not seeing that, if you see uh, the 24th or the 25th, then you have the version of the PBI BIOS uh, 3.1, which has a bug. Uh, so if you ever throw a side one cartridge in there, it will have a problem. Uh, that may not be important to you, but I'd always advocate having the most recent uh, revisions of the firmware components. So that's how you can check. Uh, that's the only real. <laughs> that's the only real way around me having to uh, bump the version numbers for the entire firmware release, just to fix tiny little issues like that. So I hope that's okay. I hope that's not too confusing, uh, because I like to keep the version numbers for the different components synchronized. And if I made a tiny change to the loader, for example, of the PBI BIOS, and bumped the version number up to 3.11, then I'd have to completely rebuild the entire archive for every single device because the version number would have to be updated in the loader and the BIOS, etc., etc. So I hope you can understand why I wasn't particularly keen to do that. So that's how you check the revision date. And as I say, that doesn't currently work uh, on the incognito because there was a bug uh, or is a bug in uh, the version of UFlash that I've supplied. I have fixed it locally, I believe. But as I say, I'm very reluctant when issuing an, an important update like this to throw in the uh, developmental version of the flasher that's just had um, some changes made to it because it could result in some uh, 
level of catastrophe, of course, for people. I don't want to do that. I would rather uh, ease these things in later on when people aren't rushing to upload and uh, to update uh, new firmware releases. In another video, I want to go through the uh, OSS ROMs and the side CFG program that I, I touched upon earlier on. And uh, in another future video, somebody did ask me uh, recently about setting up um, Ultimate and Side in the Altera emulator. Uh, and that's a very good suggestion. And I want to make a video about that as well. In the meantime, I hope this has been useful to you. It was uh, a little bit more uh, difficult to uh, think through how to present this stuff than I imagined, actually. So uh, I'm not surprised that some people get a little bit uh, all at sea when they come to uh, perform these updates for the first time. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave your comments below if you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you would like to see more of this stuff and all being well i'll see you in the next video bye bye for now and i'd just like to thank uh, those who wrote encouraging messages um over the past few days it's really very much appreciated we've got one here fantastic thanks for all the effort uh, sounds awesome thanks for all the work you continue to do on this i think i'll wait until i get the rest of my issues uh, with my XEL ironed out before the upgrade but it sounds like a lot of improvements and uh, and one more thing go fuck yourself asshole I don't give a flying fuck about putting you in your place or whatever but clearly you seem to about me as you pull this sarcastic shit nearly every time we communicate uh, so thank you very much for all those kind and wonderful words